This is the Harvard Model 87D-8-T portable oil filtration cart. As you can see it has the controls, the 1000 size housings, it's uh, pretty self-contained and it's a freestanding unit. Uh, you've got pumps and uh, valves, everything that's required to filter your oil. Uh, and we've, it's mobile so it can be moved around and located anywhere you need to have oil filtered. Uh, this particular gear pump uh, is maximum output is 8 gallons a minute. Um, and uh, this is the uh, recirc valve here. But let's start at the top and of the cart and this work down. Um, you've got the on and off switch here, indicator lights. Uh, you've got the high and low pressure protection switch here with the override. Uh, you've got system pressure. Uh, the housings where the uh, a variety of different 1000 series filter elements, depth filter elements, one micron size rated elements can be installed depending on what type of oil, uh, more specifically the viscosity or the weight that you're filtering. And um, you've got air bleed off valves. Uh, these lids of course come off and uh, these collars come off, these locking collars. Uh, to allow for the elements to be uh, installed. Um, working down, we've got here, we've got the, this is the inlet hose, the suction hose with a Y strainer that uh, takes out the uh, uh, larger particle uh, material before it gets into the gear pump to protect the gear pump. And then you've got a series of valves here. Uh, this first valve is, is uh, for it, it allows this this particular filter cart can be used for uh, transferring uh, oil or fluid uh, just from point A to point B uh, without going through the filter elements. Um, just open this valve and close these other valves here, and it'll just transfer, be sucked from point A, and then discharged and. Uh, down the discharge hose to point B. But normally this valve in the filter mode is, is closed and then the, the, the fluid of course then flows into the filter elements. Um, these particular element uh, housings uh, are in, in parallel. They filter in parallel and uh, depending on uh, flows and uh, needing to change out the elements. Uh, each, each housing can be independently isolated uh, so that you can service that particular filter element. Um, but in fully, fully operational mode uh, these valves are all open and um, so um, basically at this point the, the, this, this particular cart is self-priming um, when you do put new elements in this, all you have to do is put the suction hose in a, a quantity of oil uh, and turn on the cart and it will fill these housings and, and basically be primed and ready to put in service. Each housing holds approximately five gallons. It's really important to remember that uh, when you use this filter cart, you will deplete your system uh, if both housings are being utilized and the valves are all open you will deplete your your uh, equipment some by approximately 10 gallons so it's really important that you pre-fill and and prime and pre or that you pre-fill this this cart so that you don't uh, deplete your system uh, oil quantity filter element for this particular cart you can see it's divided up in different sections. This one's a six section. Uh, they start at two section. They got four section, six section, and they have eight section. The uh, the sections uh, give you options for the uh, different uh, 
viscosities or thicknesses of oil that you filter. Um, if it's a very lightweight oil, uh, say 20 uh, weight SAE, uh, you could use a, a two section, which you just have a, a split here. If you and then the, the the thicker the oil, the higher the viscosity, you increase the sections. When you get into the higher gear lubes, which this cart will do, uh, you will increase the sections. There'll be at least six or eight sections if you're dealing with the higher uh, 90 weight oils or the 140 weight uh, lube oils, gear lube oils. So, so this the, is the, the height element. is always the same but you just have more sections. You know, outside dimensions remain the same. The only thing that changes is the number of sections. Okay. Um, so that's really critical when it comes to knowing uh, what particular oil you are going to be filtering. Uh, the uh, SAE or the ISO weight category um, and matching the filter with that particular weight. Um, so to change the filter element, you simply remove this T-bolt and clamp. And the uh, clamp will come off. lid comes off and inside you have this is a uh, filter lifting uh, for, uh, frame and it's in there because once the element has been used and is saturated it will swell and it becomes very difficult to get it out um, so you'll use these to reach in and, and actually support that, ele that, that element which now ex is expended ready to change and bring that out with this uh, with this uh, cage. Uh, this bolt comes off. This particular T bolt has a spring and a washer on it. Uh, this particular washer has to be watched and changed periodically depending on your inspection. Uh, just do a visual inspection. If it looks like it's frayed or cracked or if it's getting a little bit hard or brittle, just go ahead and change it. Each element comes with a new washer, you'll see right here. And uh, to change that, you simply compress the spring and this dowel, this T-handle slides out, the spring comes off, and then you go ahead and remove the old washer and support rubber gasket support washer and then just reinstall it with the new the new gaskets. It's pretty straightforward. It's not that difficult to compress that spring if you have a vise or if you're on a table. Um, but anyway at this point you would in, you would insert your, your filter, uh, slide down in the outlet, the housing and uh, now that you've got a you've got a good check that you've got a good washer on your T-bolt you just screw that back down on there until it stops. It's really important that that washer be watched because if that's a bad washer it'll allow bypass, dirty, it'll allow dirty oil to bypass into the uh, discharge hose. So the oil comes up through the center mm -hmm. and goes out through the media? No, right? it, it comes up, it, it filters out from the outside and, and goes into okay. the center of the element. And then it's picked up this tube right here, there's a hole in it where the oil is returned. And that, where that hole is right there, the, the clean oil now, it's been filtered, it's gone through the depth media of the element. It's now going through that hole, down this pipe, and into the discharge hose where it's, where it's put back into the equipment. This is put back on. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes to uh, line that up just a little bit, but with just a little bit of patience, it'll go right on. And this clamp And you want to get this nice and tight 
so that you don't have any oil leaking out, but tight it and keep tightening it until it stops, just hand tights. I found works fine. You get that nice and tight. And of course the same for the the uh, other housing. Um, so at this point you have um, so do you add your oil before you no. put that lid back on? No, these these will be filled up with oil when you, because remember this is a self-priming filter cart, and you take this um, suction hose right here, and you drop this into at least five gallons. If you're only just going to use one housing, you've isolated this one uh, by the valves in the bottom, you drop this in at least five gallons of oil, and this will this will suck up that five gallons of oil, and it'll and it'll pre-fill itself. Okay, so why don't you put oil? Just go ahead and pour your oil in the because tank. you can't. It, it just Won't it's fit. just too messy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's very very messy. Okay, so advise that against way. that. Yeah, and another thing is the uh, the filter element. It would take you all day to pour that slow enough to, for the to, to absorb. be absorbed okay. into the element. Got it. It, it really just takes a matter of minutes to go ahead and, and do it the way it's supposed to be, where you put that in the quantity of oil and turn on your cart and let it just fill, and uh, that's taken care of. But at this point, you're ready to filter. Um, you've, got your, you've got your suction hose plugged into the equipment. Um, you want this to be, you want the hoses the hose ends to be as far apart as possible. Uh, the uh, suction hose on one end of the tank, if possible, and the discharge hose on the other end of the tank, if possible. Um, that allows you to filter as much of the of dirty oil and not draw in the filtered oil as possible. It also creates sort of an agitation or movement in the in the tank or the sump, to where you're moving that dirty oil around and able to pull it out. Um, so try to separate the hose ends, suction and discharge hose ends, as far as possible. Uh, sometimes it's that's not possible. Sometimes you're uh, pulling off the bottom of the tank and you're just going into a fill port on the top of the tank and various things like that. But just use com good common sense with that. But try to keep the ends uh, as far apart as possible. Um, these can be fitted with quick uh, couple connections uh, and just plugged into your sump once you determine uh, your your uh, filter hose orientation and how that's going to be done. So plugging, you basically would just plug in your suction and plug in your discharge and you're ready to go. The standard suction and discharge hose length is 10 feet. Uh, the, you can, if you need to, uh, fit this filter cart up with uh, 20 foot hoses, both suction and discharge, uh, if need be. So you essentially got a 40 foot reach all the way across total length. But um, anyway, essentially uh, you've got your hoses installed on your tank and you're ready to, ready to start the filter cart. You've gone ahead and, and pre-filled your housings. Uh, and remember, it's got to be the same oil that you're going to be filtering. Don't put a different oil in. Make sure that the oils match uh, one another. The oil being that you, that you pre-filled it with and the oil that you're filtering. Um, so at this point, you essentially, you've got your hoses plugged into the equipment and um, you've got your transfer valve closed. Uh, if you're going to use both filter elements, you make sure the housings are both, the valves are, are all four open. And um, you can go ahead and close this recirc valve completely at this point and you've plugged it in. You're ready to go. Um, so, in the instruction manual, it it uh, it it, it uh, explains how you need to you need to actually turn off. This is the high and low pressure protection module. Um, you'll need to override the low pressure protection trip by pulling that lever up. Uh, it trips at approximately 10 psi. So until this reads 10 psi, the filter cart won't start. So at this point you override the low pressure protection trip, pull that up, start it by just flipping that switch. You see the light come on here, green. 
watch your gauge. Uh, and in just a very short period of time, probably a minute or less, you'll see that start to come up. When it hits 10 PSI, approximately any, anywhere over 10, flip that down, and now it's in auto mode. Okay, and then the filter cart will continue to run at that point. It, it's important that, you, that, you've, that you've tripped that down because it's in manual mode at this point, and you want it to have the high and low pressure protection that this car is built and, and designed for, so be sure and flip that down once this is, again is at 10, approximately 10 PSI or more. At that point, you're filtering oil. You'll see this start to come up. You will, uh, in this process of starting the cart, you will need to just crack these, these vent ports just a little bit. And you'll notice you'll be able to feel air coming through those. And um, you can do them together or you can do them separately. It doesn't really matter. But... Just cock them and, or open them enough to get to let the air vent that's coming, that's the the the, uh, the little bit that's left in these, and uh, have a rag ready, because what'll happen is, uh, in a short period of time, again a minute or less, you'll start to see uh, the oil, the air will stop coming out, stop venting, and you'll see oil coming out. At that point, you can just turn that off or, or close it rather. And, and wipe it, and then the same with this one. It's really important that you uh, to, to bleed the air off these housings uh, before this cart is going to be fully functional working. So take care of that that bleed off air bleed off. Bleed off. Uh, so the cart now at this point, you bled the air off. You've you've everything's running. Uh, at this point, you're ready to actually start the cart uh, and um, adjust it for running mode, if you will. And this particular cart is, is, is designed to be uh, started and pretty much be a freestanding, unattended unit. So it's one of the nice things about it. It doesn't have to be babysat. Because if there's a problem with this cart, either on the high, high protection, it will, if it experiences a, a, a problem with high pressure, it will trip off automatically. If it experiences a, a problem with low pressure, It'll trip off automatically, and everything will turn off, and it'll just be sitting there. So when your operator comes back, um, it'll be pretty much at the point where he can just come and say, okay, well, let's take a look at why it tripped. Otherwise, when he comes back, if there hasn't been an issue, it'll just be running as he left it. So at this point, uh, this gauge is going to be reading uh, probably up around the 40 uh, PSI range. Um, one of the common questions we get about this cart, <clears throat> and, and this pertains to all of the elements, whether you're talking about a two section or an eight section, is when do you know to ch how to change, at what point do you know to change the elements? And the way you do that is, is, is by pressure differential DP. And this is an important step right here that you basically uh, have a starting point and you will do this manually, you'll set this starting point manually so that you will know when this pressure differential is at the point where you need to change the elements. How you do that is you come down here to this research valve, the red valve, and they make it red for a reason so it stands out. This valve is closed at this point because you're just starting the cart. <clears throat> so if the gauge is going to read about 40 or 50 PSI, you want to you crack that valve and what's going what what's happening when you do that is you're starting to recirculate the oil where it's coming out of these cart these these uh, housings and it's being recirculated back to the system it's being re clean oil is being refiltered uh <clears throat> but basically you open that and just watch this gauge up here and you want to bring that down to about 20 psi using that recirc valve and then when you reach that 20 psi range, it'll, it, you'll, no, you'll notice it's very stable. It'll come down, and, and if you don't turn the valve anymore, it'll pretty much stay right at 20. At this point, you want to tie that valve off uh, with, a, with a wire tie or a plastic tie so that somebody can't come along and, and readjust it because that'll mess up your, your datum or your starting point for, for when you to change the elements. So now you'll know... Okay, I started at 20 PSI, 
And when that gets to be about 45 or 50 PSI, if this valve has been left right where you adjusted it originally, you will change these elements at that 40 to 50 PSI range. That's where you'll change them, and that's how you know them. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, again, the, the cart will run by itself and, and, and be and can be a completely unattended. Um, everything on this valve and this cart pretty much is serviceable. The motor can be replaced independent of everything else. The gear pump can, ha can be rebuilt. It has a, a seal kit that can be purchased. There's no adjusting on this pump. Uh, come, you just leave it adjusted as from the factory. You don't do any adjusting. The Y strainer needs to be uh, cleaned periodically, probably depending on the, the type of oil that you're filtering. You might want to clean that daily if, you, if, if, if required. You have to kind of watch that. Um, but that will be helpful keeping to, to make sure this cart lasts. These particular uh, 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 fittings here are for just draining the elements uh, or draining the housings when it's time to change the elements. Uh, so you basically just you know take this uh, cap off and put a bucket under there and and then uh, let the oil run out. Uh, you don't want to change these until you drained them, otherwise you'll have a real mess on your hands. So drain out the oil. What if you have a lot of water in your oil? Will it fail prematurely? The water uh, the water can be an issue. It can pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, it 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 messes up a little bit the DP. Uh, uh, reading on your gauge, your pressure differential, and um, if you suspect water, and water can be a very common problem, and a lot of people are using the filter guard because they do have not only particulate contamination, but they all have water contamination, and they need to remove both. These particular housings uh, will re this p uh, will each hold about a gallon, a gallon and a half of water. They'll remove the uh, the water simultaneously with the, with the particulate contamination and and do that at the same time. But if you suspect water, you'll just kind of have to watch that. Um, it, it takes a little more uh, watching the cart if you suspect you have a water issue and until the water is completely uh, out, of, out of the system. Um, using this particular cart, uh, you can get your oil uh, extremely clean and completely free of water. Uh, it is very sensitive to taking the water out. Um, one way to know for sure if you are completely, you've completely filtered out all the water is when you take this, this cover off. You've drained the housing and you're, you've, you've noticed your pressure differential is up around 45. Say, okay, well, it got there a little quicker than I thought, but you know who knows? I think I may have a water problem. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You drain your housing, take the cover off, and what we call the thumb test is you just press down on the top of that filter element like this. Take your thumb and push down on it. Now you know, notice on a hard new element, you cannot compress it. It's too hard. But if it's got water saturation, you'll be able to push it down very easily and it'll stay down. And that's how you know if you have water contamination. That's an absolutely sure way of knowing. Otherwise, you're not sure. You'll notice if you have a water problem, you may go through elements uh, a little more quickly until you get the water contamination out and then, and then over a period of time, uh, depending on the quantity of oil and, and uh, of course, how much water you're having to get out. Uh, you might have to go through two or three or four filter elements, uh, but you know there's there's really no other way to get the oil out. But this way, you're you're absolutely assured that you're getting the oil out. But that thumb test is a real sure way of knowing uh, whether you've got water contamination. Of course, if you've got a really bad water contamination, it'll go down and stay down. But if it's just a little water, it'll just you know it'll just go in a little bit, and then and then as you remove all the water, you'll find that you can't push it down at all. So it is getting that water out along with the solids.